Hi, this is Travis Hedger. Uh, this is going to be my first presentation I've ever done in my entire life. So, if you can, please give me a little bit of slack on that. I'm doing the best that I can. Um, basically, here we go. Um, this is my presentation for evidence of, evidence of heliocentrism, whereas uh, we compare geocentrism, a theory that celestial bodies, uh, the sun, and other planets orbit around the Earth, uh, being that basically the Earth is uh, the center of the universe and that everything orbits around that versus heliocentrism, the theory that celestial bodies of the solar system orbit the sun instead. Here we've got uh, two side-by-side -side pictures, uh, Earth being at the center in the first one in the Ptolemy model and the Copernican model over here. Uh, basically, this would be practically impossible because in order for everything to orbit the Earth, we would have to be either uh, much larger than we are uh, or much denser than we are in order to be able to have this kind of gravitational pull to have everything being roped around us. Uh, we know that is not the case uh, based upon modern uh, measuring techniques, uh, planes, uh, jets, um, manned spacecraft, unmanned spacecraft, uh, other items like that. Uh, we have, since we've been able to circumnavigate the globe, uh, since the days of Magellan, uh, models have been made uh, showing that Earth is no longer flat and such. So we have a very good idea of how big we actually are. Uh, we developed information about the gravitational constant so we know exactly uh, the rate at which things would fall within a particular environment uh, based on the uh, mass of the object or sphere that you're dealing with. Uh, but anyway, basically uh, the Ptolemy model stated that everything rotated completely around the Earth. Uh, the Copernican model uh, advanced that even though he still had some information wrong. Uh, things were not in a perfect circle as seemingly shown over here on the right hand side. Uh, basically what this uh, shows us here is that uh, and by evidence from my observations uh, things appear to rotate around the Sun instead. Uh, here's a more advanced information uh, piece here that shows why Venus seems to rotate the way that it does. As the Earth moves around, I'm sorry, as the uh, Venus and Mercury and the Sun revolves around, Venus seems to follow this little concentric orbit as it would go around the Sun, and it would be lined up with that. And this would go along with the information that we believe where, uh, looking at this particular screenshot, you know, we know that uh, Earth, or I'm sorry, Venus's greatest elongation has a maximum of 46 degrees. So looking at this particular screenshot, at any particular time, if the sun is setting or if the sun is rising, it's never going to be more than, let's just call it 45 degrees, about halfway across a 90 degree line between south and west or south and east uh, further over. Uh, basically, uh, if Venus was out here and the sun was over here, there'd be something disastrously wrong with the universe and uh, things probably wouldn't be lasting that long at that particular point. But uh, basically, um, in my observations, you know, I've seen it in the evening sky and in the morning sky that when Venus is along this further out plane and further away from the sun, it becomes easier to see as a disk of light. And it follows this path on a night-to-night -night basis on the, along the ecliptic plane. But as the sun moves, so will the orbit around, uh, so will Venus move around its orbit. Uh, this brings us to the different things about the uh, phases of Venus. If we look at this particular screenshot, as Venus is orbiting the Sun, as the whole thing moves around, uh, we would only normally see, under Ptolemy's model, specific crescents. But because Venus has to orbit the Sun, and as Galileo has shown, Venus has specific phases just like the Moon. You would have, uh, you know, full Venus back here, we wouldn't really be able to see it, new Venus right here, uh, because, you know, it'd be within the sun's parameters of uh, proximity. We wouldn't be able to see that, but we do see these more developed and uh, gibbous phases, uh, half phases uh, or quarters, and uh, crescent phases that are uh, waning and uh, waxing, just very similar to the moon. And if we compare these two to uh, screens here, uh, for Venus to be moving around in this little concentric circle as it moves around, if it did not have phases, it must follow this particular model where we'd only see a sliver as it faces the sun when it moves across uh, the Earth, I'm sorry, as it moves across the sun during its particular retrograde motion because, you know, the Earth is going to be where it is where we perceive it to be. Venus moves across the night sky, uh, so does uh, Jupiter, Mars, everything else, but as this is moving around in this little concentric circle that follows around, Venus must 
not have phases, but it's been observed to have phases. We've seen pictures of it. We can observe it ourselves uh, with powerful telescopes. Uh, not even that powerful telescopes. I mean, Galileo had a pretty rinky-dink telescope and was able to see uh, phases of, I'm uh, not phases, uh, moons of Jupiter. But basically, this is uh, my evidence of uh, what I believe to be the heliocentric type of model, because if Venus was not concentric within a, uh, I'm sorry, if Venus was not within a maximum elongation of 47 degrees, it would be out of this particular uh, circular rotation, uh, or, I'm sorry, circular revolution from the sun as the sun moved around, so there'd be something very, uh, very wrong with the universe. And as it follows around, it will also get bigger as it gets closer, as it passes between uh, the Earth and the sun, it would also be the case. Um, originally, I also thought, thought that the uh, models of the planets were independent of each other, whereas the sun could be over uh, here as it rotates around, and that Venus would also be... Uh, in opposition, so to speak, but since Venus must be within a 45 to 47 degree uh, rotation, I'm sorry, revolution around the sun, then uh, that would be an impossibility. Venus could never be at opposition where the sun is at one side, the Earth is in the middle, and that uh, Venus is somewhere else. Uh, that would even be shown up here. Uh, you know, Venus could never be on the opposite side of I'm sorry, Venus can never be on the opposite side, like you say, where Jupiter would be, so to speak. Uh, you can never have the Earth between the Sun and Venus, uh, no matter how hard you want to try. Uh, if you did, you'd have some really good superpowers. Uh, anyway, I really hope that uh, you enjoyed uh, my presentation and that the evidence that I supplied uh, gives a good supporting uh, evidence for the heliocentric model. Uh, here is my list of references, references, and have a good day.